Hi, Chad and Olive here with Purple Collar Life. In this video, I'm going to show how I clean out the Harman P68 pellet stove. And if you've watched us so far this winter, you know that we have a wood burner down in the basement. I use that pretty often to burn firewood to heat the majority of the house. But right now I'm in the big great room and the Harman pellet stove is what heats this space most of the time. So in a future video, I'll kind of do a comparison and a review of pellet stove versus wood stove. But in this video, I'm doing one of my least favorite tasks, which is cleaning out the pellet stove. Now this happens just about every three quarter ton of pellets to one ton of pellets. I'm a little bit overdue right now. I've got a lot of ash built up in there and there's a lot of clean out to do. So I'll walk you through that process. But first, I wanna to talk to you about what tools you need or what tools I recommend using for cleaning out a pellet stove. Definitely newspaper. I like to place newspaper down on the floor below the pellet stove because inevitably dust and dirt does get down here and you can see I'm on carpet right now so I try to keep the black ash from getting on the carpet. You're gonna want a really good shop vac. This is a Craftsman five horsepower, 12 gallon shop vac. Um, I recommend a really good filter in it. This is the drywall dust filter. So it's very fine, picks up very fine particulate. The first time I did this, I used a regular filter. It did not catch all the dust and fines. And this entire room was filled with a grayish, dusty, uh, smoky type of smell for a while. So two things I've done to eliminate that. Number one, the drywall filter. And number two, it seems a little strange, but I've got an old sock here on the exhaust of the shop vac. It's held on by three hair ties. So if you've got a teenage daughter, you've probably got hair ties laying around. Just take an old sock, put it over the exhaust, put some hair ties in place or rubber bands to hold it. And that's just another layer of filtration for the exhaust coming out to keep dust and dirt from getting into your room. I like to use the reduction attachment. So it gives me a smaller area to get into the nooks and crannies of the pellet stove. A flashlight's good. We've got good lighting in this room, but to see down in there and up above where all the areas are trying to get cleaned out. And then when I remove the dust pan, you'll see there's a lot of space in there. You can't see very well without a good light. So I use my rigid um, tool set light to illuminate the area I'm working in. And then this pellet stove tool that came with the Harman P68 is used to clean the crevices, the burn pan, and you'll see all that as we go to work here. Now there's a good chance that while you're doing this task, you will get dirty. Your hands will get dirty, your clothes may get dirty, uh, so just be prepared for that. I like to go ahead and use the shot back to get this tray cleaned off before I even open the door. Try to keep stuff from falling out on the ground. And then there'll be a lot of dust here on the inside of this door. I'm gonna go ahead and start vacuuming that off with the shop vac. Now, if it gets to this point, you've waited too long, like I have here. You can see this is just normal daily burn. So this stuff would just get scraped out each morning when you're using the pellet stove. And you can see there's a lot of buildup along this edge. That should be a flat edge. So we'll be breaking all that off as we clean it. Same thing here. And there's a lot of dust everywhere in this inside of the stove. But when you look down into this ash pan, you can see that it's almost up to the side levels here. The ash is right here. That's way too much. It's too much to even pull the pan out without spilling it everywhere. So as I'm vacuuming this out, before I pull the bottom pan out, I will be vacuuming some from out of there just to keep me from losing the overflow as I pull the dust pan out of the bottom.
And I'd like to show you cleaning out some of the burn pan here. This part piece comes off by pulling up and out. And like I said, there's a lot of stuff there on the sides. And you'll see that with some elbow grease, those chunks do come off. That's just carbon built up from the fire and it's along the bottom and the sides of that burn pan. Here's an example how big some of those chunks are and that's solid hard. And it's hard to get off of those sides and the bottom, but if you use the tool that came with the pellet stove, at least as an example, this Harman P68 came with the tool, those will scrape off. And then the other side of the tool, this flat side, gives you a more clean scrape. I use the pointy edge to break up the things I can't get scraped out and then the flat side to clean things down nicely. Now I'll use the shop vac and you'll hear those big chunks getting pulled out of there. Now that's quite a bit better, but you can see right in there where the light is right now, there's still some stuff stuck on there. So I'll give it a couple more scrapes. There's still some here on the sides. We'll try to get that cleaned out a little bit better. Now being, in addition to being a sharp point to scrape at things, this triangle shaped tool does have a purpose. If you look up in here, the top of the pellet stove you can see it's the perfect shape to get up there and clean out those areas. That's where the heat goes up and then comes out those channels for heating the room through the blower. So those do get a lot of stuff on them. You can see they're pretty dirty right now, but this tool is exactly the right shape to get up in there and get those cleaned out. Now I'm not gonna put the camera in there because it'll get really dirty while I'm working on that area, but you'll see a lot of dust fall down from back here. We got this upper area cleaned out really good. The tool did a nice job up in the top there. So we're almost done with that. We'll do the glass cleaning last, but now I'll show you down here where the base is. There's the ash pan. And you can see as soon as I open the door, a lot of ash comes out. So again, I'll use the shop back to clean up that area before I pull the pan out. And you can see why it's so important to have the newspaper down. There's a lot of ash there already. Chunks of these black pieces would get ground into the carpet. As soon as you open the door, the door extends beyond. The door extends beyond my base here. So all of those ashes would be out here on the carpet. And then you can see as soon as I start pulling this pan out. Now remember, I sucked a lot of that stuff out from up above because it was overflowing. But as soon as I lift up the handle here, you'll see it was clear up above that level. So I'm gonna clean that off now. You can see how much ash is down there in the base that didn't get captured into the pan. So we'll suck all that out of there. Now there's a couple other things down in here that need to be opened up to be cleaned out. One are those two butterfly knobs right there. So you'll see I need to loosen these up. You can see there's a lot of dust and ash falling down below from in there. Once you get those loosened up, that whole plate comes out. And that's actually where the dust falls down in by the igniter. So we want to get that all sucked out. 
I did get that space all cleaned out in there. So now I can put the plate back on it. And you can see my hands got pretty dirty doing that because you have to stick your hand in there carefully because there are wires in there with the igniter and you always want to do all of this cleaning when the stove is cool and not hot. Um, you don't want to over tighten these because they do get really hard to come off if they get over tightened. So the last thing we need to do is remove the cover for the blower and the fan access and the um, air inlet. So this can be hard sometimes. This little piece pushes up. You push this little handle up. It rotates like that. And then this whole thing comes out. And you can see we want to clean that blower fan out. We want to clean down this air inlet. So we use the shop back to do that. Now we can put that cover back on. Now there's two things you need to do outside. One is take the ash pan out and dump it in the woods, as long as those ashes are all cool, which this has not been burning since last night before bed. So ours are cool, we can safely dump them in the woods. And then there's one other thing I need to show you that we need to do outside. So there's an area here in the woods where I dumped that ash pan out. And again, I told you you'd get dirty doing this. Gloves might be a good idea, but the gloves would probably be ruined afterwards. This, this would just wash off my hands and the utility sink downstairs. So here is the pellet stove exhaust outside our house. And there are a couple things we want to do here to get this cleaned out. First of all, this top second section just needs tapped off and you'll see stuff falls down out of it and again you want to stand back because that will fall on you so I'm gonna do that without holding the camera and then I'll show you the last part now the last thing is there's a little ash pan down here at the bottom requires twisting and pulling down and this can be pretty hard especially in the winter time when things are tight but I'll see if I can get it loosened up and show you now I was able to get it twisted with two hands and again every time I'm pulling on something here Stuff's falling out of up there, so you want to be cautious. Stuff will fall all over you. But you can see some of the ash does get captured there. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump that out. And then just some gentle tapping will knock other stuff. I pulled this top section off because it was losing so much junk all over me. And you can see there's quite a bit inside it. These vents are full. So I'm gonna to try to get that cleaned out a little bit here. You can see I did get quite a bit of ash on the ground there, but I got that put back in. Got the top put back on. It's a lot more clean now, so that will really help. Okay, so now before we clean up, we'll put the ash pan back in. We wanna go ahead and clean the glass while it's open. Dust off the top of the pellet stove just to get everything all cleaned up so it's all done. To clean the glass, I just take a damp paper towel. The ash that's on here will actually help clean the glass a little bit. So just kind of rub that in. Rotate your paper towel around the clean sides. And there we go. Didn't use any chemicals, no Windex or anything like that. Just some water. Now this would get a little cleaner if you just do it one more time with a clean paper towel or a Norwex rag. Normally I wouldn't even use a paper towel on that because Jennifer only allows me one roll of paper towels per month. So I'm really sparing on the paper towels. She likes me to use the Norwex cloths. This is a, a damp Norwex Enviro cloth. So this will get the rest of that film off the glass. And this could have been used instead of the paper towel. And then you can see it got more dirt off. I do not use anything wet on the top of the pellet stove. I don't want to encourage any rust. So there's another Norwex mitt that I'll be using. It's a dry mitt to get the dust off of there. So then this particular dust Norwex mitt, you rub it together for magical static electricity. 
and then you can use it to pull the dust right off the top. And the pellet stove gets really dusty since the blower's always running, the auger's always running. And you can see we've actually got some areas here where something has scraped the paint off the surface. So if you used a wet cloth, that would start to rust. And that's it. So if you like videos like this, make sure you click on that like button, comment down below. Uh, again, this is the Harman P68. We'll do a separate video about a total review of this particular pellet stove, how to operate it, things we like, things we don't like. Uh, but that was the one of my least favorite things is doing the clean out. It's a lot of work, it's very dirty. You can see I ended up pretty dirty. Even though I have newspaper on the floor, there are still some areas in the carpet that I got some black marks that'll need vacuumed up.